Hello, I'm Ujjal Dasanj, an ESL kid. I came to Canada in 1968, exactly 50 years ago. I am an immigrant, but not a new one. And um, I want to talk about two or three different things. Let me begin with the mess that we've made of the Indigenous Canadians' lives in Canada. I want to begin with that because um, that is important to me as an immigrant. Because equality, justice, and fairness for immigrants, from my point of view, cannot be had completely unless the First Nations of this country get justice and equality. That's why I raise this issue. I will give you an example. Out of mind, out of sight. Out of sight, out of mind. In Bombay, when you go down by plane to the airport, you see slums. They're visible to you. You can see them. They're never out of mind. You can be traveling first class. In Canada, you go to Vancouver Airport, you see the finest First Nations art, glittering art, wonderful. You forget about what we've done to their lives. And let me give you two or three statistics. In the last eight years, the 5% population of the First Nations has produced 25% of Canadian inmates in Canadian prisons. They have increased by 39% over the last eight years. Black population of Canada is 3%. They provide 10% of the Canadian inmates. Their population has increased by 42% in the prisons. Lancet, the British Magical Journal, recently said that we have a developing Canada within a developed Canada. I would actually say we have an undeveloped Canada within a developed Canada. There is a huge wealth gap between the rich and poor. That's another Canada. Then you have the question of inequalities, the racial, ethnic, gender, LGBTQ inequality, and many other inequalities. So that's another Canada within our Canada. So I want to actually talk about immigrants, having said all of what I just said. We're always told we're a country of immigrants. Of course, the First Nations were here before anybody else got here. We are a country of immigrants. But I want to actually argue that we haven't really done a very good job of integrating all of the immigrants. I know I'm a bit of a solitary voice on that, but, but here are some of the issues. Some people say to me that immigration has always solved itself. Over time, generations take care of it. People evolve, people change, they integrate. We don't even use the word integration anymore. We keep saying this diversity is strength. I don't know how that is. It's almost a facile, vacuous um, slogan. Diversity is not strength unless you do it right. And you, to do it right, you need integration. We have a fragmented, digitally disconnected world today, all over the world, particularly in advanced countries like Canada. So you need social solidarity. You need social cohesion. And I must say that multiculturalism, the way we practice multiculturalism, is not a centripetal force. It doesn't pull you into the center. It's a centrifugal force. It pushes you away from the center to be on your own. So we're not producing a high degree of social solidarity and social cohesion that we need to have a prosperous and harmonious society. And that's a fundamental question that some of us have refused to actually deal with. We keep saying diversity is strength, multiculturalism is great. Uh, but with all of this, we, we continue to actually sink deeper into the whole of identity politics, the sinkhole of identity politics. And you have recently, um, let, let, me, let me say to you how we've not done such a good job. There are one million Canadians who are Muslims. We produce over 165 ISIS fighters from Canada. There are five to six million French uh, Muslims in France. They produce over 500, only just 500 ISIS fighters. We're not doing such a good job. And then you've seen the recent Khalistani issues. Second, third generation Khalistanis living in this country, Sikh separatists living in this country, not even been, not, not even having been to that country, 
carry this dream in their minds to have a separate country millions of miles, thousands of miles away. And our politicians, the pandering politicians, you know, we, we continue to pander to these kinds of minorities, identity politics par excellence. That's not how you build a greater country. That's not how you actually build a socially cohesive uh, country. From my perspective, my dream, I have six grandchildren between the ages of 11 and six. And I'm sure many of you have children and grandchildren. My dream for Canada, I'm an immigrant. My dream for Canada is, I'm known as an Indo-Canadian. My dream for Canada is that my grandchildren and their children and your children and grandchildren in 50 years would be known only as Canadians, unhyphenated Canadians. That's a dream I have for Canada in the next 50 years. But we can't do that. We can't do that unless we do justice to the First Nations. The fundamental problem in this country, it will always remain. You can't really have legitimate equality, fair society, just society of the senior Trudeau's years. When I came to Canada in 68, he was talking about just society in 1968. And we don't have that just society just as yet. We need to build that just society. And for that to happen, I have one more dream. In the next 50 years, I want to see at least one, if not two, indigenous prime ministers of Canada. I want to see at least one more, if not two more, women prime ministers of Canada. Real equality happens when you have real people in real jobs. We can have all the slogans in the world. Diversity is strength. But what does it mean? I want to see the First Nations reflected in the highest positions in this land, in the most important positions in this country. That would be a fairer Canada, a more inclusive Canada, a more generous Canada, more compassionate Canada, and a more caring Canada, the kind of Canada I want to build. Thank you.